All right, we are back. It is the NFL. Can you believe it? It's week one. I'm Scott Matthews. This is the one and only OSB Sports Podcast, and I am joined by the big kahuna himself, the master of OSB Sports, Tommy D. What's up, Tommy? Well, I'm super excited. All Come I on. Say. I'm really? Su super excited. We've been waiting months for this, and it's here, and we're going to make some money this week. All right. Well, joined also by the great, the CEO of the Sports Profits, Mr. Teddy Brooks. What's up, Big Teddy? What's happening, guys? Very excited. Uh, fun week one college football. Now we have week one NFL, and, and I can't wait. You crushed it, my man. You went 2-0 and on the show, and you you and I both agreed on that Tennessee game, and they uh, they exploded, and you like Connecticut, which was a great winner. So you, you must have a lot on your mind to talk about. It, it was close, and I do have a lot on my mind, Scotty. Before we get into any of these games, though, we have a clip that I saw this weekend that I loved, and it reminded me why college football is my favorite sport. Let's take a look at it. This is UNC versus USC. It's the Mayo Classic. I love it. And this fan's just covering himself in Mayo. So I had an idea. What do you think of that, Tommy? What do I think of that? Did it go viral? It should have. Yeah, it, it's viral. But I had an idea. I think whoever... I think that's Tommy. <laughs> whoever has the worst uh -huh. record at the end of the year between us three, we should make them do that. Oh, wow. I don't know about that <laughs> That's one. That's a great idea. What about when the Eagles won the Super Bowl a bunch of years ago? There was a guy in Philly. There was a bunch of horses there from the police. A guy started eating the crap right on, on the floor. Oh, uh, it's true. I've never uh, a been cra a crazy. Philly listen, band. I feel like I got to be the one and tame you prisoners down today. <laughs> he, he got Just right relax on, he got here. Right on, right Where on, are we going here, guys? Right on his knees, and he did it. So, wow. Yeah. They say Philly fans are the craziest. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm going to say one thing that I saw yesterday going to soccer. There's a team named Leon. Of course. And they lost to PSG. And the, 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 the players and the coaches all had to go out while the fans got microphones and the fans just had a chance to berate them. Imagine that happening in, in American pro sports. The players would never deal with it but i loved it because you know the team's stinking lately and the fans just went out there it was like twitter it was like twitter comments but in real life well crazy there were, there's two teams i know I, I think it was either honduras and el salvador they declared war over, over a soccer game yeah. years ago so soccer is a totally different uh element from u.s sports they get they get crazy over there in europe that's for sure yeah, yeah. guys listen i got to keep the show moving because we got a lot to talk about and with the week one of the nfl there's nothing better to talk about and i want to get some opinions here because that's what the people want to hear they want to hear the great experts opinion and we've got an opening night thursday night game can't get any better than this but there are some injuries and some holdouts that could make this game more interesting Tommy, I want to get your take on the uh, what you think on this game between Detroit and Kansas City to kick things off on Thursday in the NFL. No doubt a marquee matchup, uh, defending uh, Super Bowl champs at home. Uh, Detroit's playing in KC. Interesting line movement here. Line opened up at 7.5. In some places, it's down to 4.5 and, and 5. KC has uh, a major player that's not going to Kelsey. Kelsey's Kel out. Kelsey is out. Chris Jones so also on the defense. People are jumping on the dog here. I mean, you got to give the Lions a little respect here. Last 10 games, their ATS record is 9-1. and one. KC is 4-6. and six. Uh, Lions are 6-1 and one, uh, in the last seven games in September. And uh, I'm all over Detroit on this one. I think KC is obviously going to come out. But Super Bowl... Winners could come out flat out of their first game. All right, so you're thinking uh, Detroit plus, uh, right now, currently about four and a half, five. I'm, I'm going to take the Lions plus the points. Okay. Anything to add to that, Ted? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are looking at this game and talking about the Chiefs and what they have and what they don't have. They, they don't have Kelsey. They don't have Jones. So their top offensive and defensive player might be out on each side. They do have Mahomes. I don't want to bet against Mahomes. That's what everyone says. But people aren't talking about the fact that Jared Goff made some big leaps last year, right? And 
strong like, year. Like Tommy said, they they did very well against the spread. So I'm looking at this team and I'm saying that line movement occurred for the most part, Tommy, before they announced Kelsey was hurt. So if that line just moved because Kelsey was hurt, I would say eh, I wouldn't put too much stock into it. But it moved before he got hurt. It opened up at seven and it was down to five and a half, six before Kelsey got hurt. I'm with Tommy on this one. I like the Lions plus the points. It's scary betting against Mahomes, so I'm going to keep it small, but I'm going to go with the Lions. All right. Well, you know what? It looks like a clean sweep of the board because not only Jared Goff, but he is 6-0 and on the first week of the season in his career. He's 6-0 and against the spread. 4-2 and straight up, 6-0 and as a starting quarterback, week one of the NFL. So that's an interesting uh, stat. Plus, they won eight out of the last ten games, so they ended the year. This Dan Campbell, he is an intense coach, and he will get his troops ready for this game. He's probably firing them up as we're speaking right now. Andy Reid's a great coach, but I think with all these, the, the defense is going to get really hurt uh, with Jones out. I think that's going to be a big factor in the game. He is their leading pass rusher on Kansas City, and now with Kelsey out, that's really – I like Detroit in this game. I would buy this line up to plus six because I think you can get five right now, and I, I'd make it go to plus six. And I think Detroit stays in this game, and they definitely have a shot to win this game outright. But take it plus six, guys. I'm a numbers guy. I look for the numbers. I like Detroit big time. We want to move to college football because we got a lot of big games coming up, and I know we all want to get our thoughts and opinions in there. But we got a huge board on uh, Saturday coming up. Is there anything you're looking at, uh, Tommy, for Saturday? Well, another big line movement here. You got uh, A&M, Texas A&M, playing the Hurricanes. Now, last week, we... Uh, we might not have that game if we get that Hurricane well, down it's, here. Well, it's still, you know, a little premature to talk about that Hurricane. But uh, assuming that the weather holds up, that line opened up at 6.5, A&M favorite. They bet it down to 4.5. Now, both teams last week... Did have a strong showing. I did put out the Hurricanes first half against Miami of Ohio last week on my private service. Uh, but I, I see the Hurricanes at home playing tough. They have the momentum here. I'm going to take the points with the Hurricanes plus four and a half over A&M on Saturday. I'm looking at uh, DraftKings and FanDuel as I'm talking to you right now, and that line is actually down to four in some places. So there is a lot of strong money coming in on Miami on that game. 100%. So, uh, you like it at, at plus four with the well, Hurricanes? Yeah, I, I actually grabbed it at four and a half. And already. there might be nasty weather down there because if we get, guys, we get hit by these bad storms uh, down here in South Florida. We are based out of this area. So, right. um, you know, there could be some weather factor in that game. So pay close attention as the game gets closer. Teddy, anything you're looking at on Saturday? Do you like that game or any other game that stands out to you as a big play? I, I, I'm looking at three games. Uh, I'm looking at – this is a little bit of a homer pick because it's my team, but I'm looking at UCF against Boise State. Uh, Boise State got crushed last week. UCF got the job done. John Reese Plumley looks amazing. And Boise State got crushed by Michael Penix, Washington's quarterback. And I think that – not penis, Penix – <laughs> but I think that um, make sure you make that he clear. double he double he double looked yeah. at me when oh. I said that. But Got it's a little nervous. There. <laughs> but but UCF it, it, early season they're they're good against the spread early in the season. Um, in the first ten games last year, they were seven and three against the spread. The line movements favoring UCF and something that I like to see is so many people are on Boise in this game. So I'm on UCF. I'm also on Ole Miss and Mississippi State. We can get into why later if you want to. But I'm on those two teams, SEC, all the way. Wow. All right. Well, you like the SEC. You made comments that they're a powerhouse. I agree with you. You got some of the best seat. But I'll tell you that uh, LSU, they didn't show up against uh, – we'll talk about that uh, later on maybe. But uh, they didn't show up in the second half of that game against uh, Florida State. They uh, railroaded them. But I'll tell you what, I love – a matchup here. This is almost like a revenge game, but I don't really call it a revenge because, you know, these teams play each other once in a great while. But they may start playing each other more sooner because of the Pac-12 moving teams into the Big Ten and Big 12 conferences. I like Wisconsin big time uh, playing this week against Washington State. They got Wisconsin six and a half on the road. 
I just think that it's going to it's a major play for them. I think their program is turning around. They've been up and down, you know, over the they used to be a powerhouse for many many years, and now they, I think they're turning it in the right direction. I think the line just indicates, and I'm a numbers guy. I think if Washington State was right, this game would have been like four, maybe four and a half, you know. But it's six and a half, and it's a solid number. I really like Wisconsin, and, and Washington State went into Wisconsin a couple of years ago as a 17-half-point underdog and beat them. So I think that'll be in the back of their mind as well. So I'm jumping all over Wisconsin in this game, and I probably make this line just at six, just to be on, you know, not that I'm worried about it, but I would take uh, Wisconsin plus six. I think that's the best bet for me on Saturday. That's the only game I'm really going strong on. Anything else on uh, Saturday that I'm, before I'm, we go I'm, into the I'm, NFL? I'm, I'm going to stick with just uh... – the Hurricanes plus the points. That's your best bet. For Saturday, but I have some big plays for Sunday. And you've been uh, kicking some ass with these best bets uh, uh, on these shows, so that's good. Can't, can't complain, but I think Sunday's board it has more more promise. All right. Anything you, you want to yeah, add? I really just got to plug Ole Miss one more time. They're playing Tulane. Uh, Tulane is a team that I think can't stand up to Ole Miss, right? Ole Miss has Jackson Dart, who... There were a lot of question marks about him going into last week's game. They went in, and granted, it was Mercer. I mean, week one, these college teams a lot of times play non-FBS teams, and it can get a little out of control. Yep. But they smashed them 73-7. to And in this specific matchup, Tulane and Ole Miss play a lot. Ole Miss dominates the matchup. They've won the last 12 times that they've played them, including by 40 points two years ago. And that's what I was saying a couple of weeks ago about college football. You can look back, and history has a tendency to repeat itself in college in college football. You're time. not scared of uh, Tulane finally being ranked in the top 25 in the country to start a season off? I know they're both ranked in the top 25, but, uh, you know, they, must, they might have a team this year. Yeah, you got 22 and 24 here, and that's interesting. But, mm -hmm. but I mean, listen, Tulane crushed the spread last year. Can't deny it, but they lost a lot of players to the NFL. So because of that, Scotty, okay. no. I'm one not one of thing them. about college football, though, you brought up an example, Mercer. Like I don't even know where Mercer is, but they they should not be on the same field. You know, college football week one, they'll they'll throw in a top team against someone that they couldn't beat in in a hundred years, and it, it's debatable why they even have these type of games. Because I mean, players could number one get hurt. It's really like playing almost a high school squad. So it, when you see these scores, 73 to 3 and whatever, I guess it's for just the money. But uh, I, I think it's debatable why you even throw a game like that out there. Yeah, they pay them, right? So, like, of course like they get Ole paid. Miss pays Mercer 100%. to play them. I think it does a couple things. It gives the other team some exposure. It gives them national exposure. And it gives the better team a little practice and confidence boost. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's I got to ask you guys something though. There's a there's a game in Tuscaloosa this week. It's probably the marquee game of the weekend. Does anybody have an opinion on that game between Texas and Alabama? And it's crazy. Texas has never played in over 100 years in Tuscaloosa. They're playing each other this week. Alabama's a seven point favorite. Just curious if you guys any opinion on that Ted, at all? I, I mean, this is one game where I don't think history repeats itself because if you look at history, Texas dominates Alabama, right? They're, I think they're seven and two. In the last nine games, which is almost impossible to dominate Alabama, they're, if you think about they're it. like the only team. They're pretty much the only team that dominates <laughs> that dominates Alabama. But, but, I don't think it's going to happen this week. Okay. You looked at I'm not their, looking to put you on the spot if you no, don't like. You no, know. I, I I gave Alabama as my value pick to win the national championship. I don't think they're they're losing. What's the line on the game? Seven, solid. Alabama at home, seven points. And Texas has not played there, you're saying? In oh, seven, 1902, I believe. Yep, they've never played in Tuscaloosa. Wow. They played in bowl games probably and met up in you know big games, but never. You saw that great play that Jalen Milrow had uh, in game one where they fum he fumbled the, sna the uh, fumbled snap, he picked it up and turned yeah, it into a touchdown. It on, so yeah. he's a playmaker. Now it's just a question of can he make the reads and the decisions in the pocket to be that next-level quarterback. We know he can make plays. And I think you still might see some other quarterbacks because they're still trying to figure out who their starter really yeah, they're is. they're rotating still. And they're still rotating, and I think they still might do a little rotating in in this Texas game. But like right. I said, Saban has the chip on his shoulder. 
I'm going Alabama if I had to choose. All right, there you go. Listen, Big Kahuna, I know you've been uh, talking to me about this for almost six months since the Super Bowl, waiting for the NFL. Well, guess what? It's here. It's here. All right, and we got games on Sunday, and I know you've done your homework. Is there anything you're looking at on Sunday? Well, this is a game you're probably not going to uh, uh, appreciate, but the Eagles fly up to New England. You always like to go against my Patriots, huh? Well, you know, this could be Belichick's last year. Oh All right, boy. because there's rumbling, grumbling that uh, Mr. Uh, Kraft. Kraft, thank you, is not really happy with, with Belichick. So this is, has to be a year that he produces. Big question mark, will the Patriots have a good year? You got Mac Jones, which is still untested, in my opinion, as, as a, a real quarterback against Jalen Hurts. Uh we all know what the Eagles did last year. They're looking to come out and show that they should have won that Super Bowl and want to get back in it. 16-4 and four straight up the last 20. Uh, I got to lay the four with Philly up there. I, I think they beat the Patriots by at least a touchdown. The Patriots would just have to play an unbelievable game to beat the Eagles. I'm taking Philly. Well, don't forget, it's the first week of the season. So, you know, sometimes these teams aren't up there yet. They're still around here. So a lot of things could happen. But uh, all right, I'll I'll accept it. Listen, uh, (laughs) I'm looking for the Patriots, hopefully, to have a a decent season. I don't know how far it's going to go because that AFC East is loaded and uh, the AFC in general is loaded. Let's go over to Ted and see what he's thinking uh, for the NFL. I'm sure you uh, have a best bet or some games this week. I do have a best bet, and I have a really cool stat. Uh, first round or first pick overall quarterback. Oh. Week one is 1-13 in 13 against the spread and 0-14 oh straight up in the last 14 years or the last 14 times right. the quarterback has been picked first. And when I look at that, I look at the Falcons. Um, I look at, you know, yet the only question mark for me with the Falcons is this Riddler quarterback that they have. He's really unproven. He played four games last year, not the best numbers. Um, limited his turnovers, though, which is very important, but he didn't really have a lot of yards and touchdowns. Um, they drafted Bijan Robinson, eighth overall from Texas. I'm looking at this and saying that trend is going to continue. Bryce Young being that first-round pick, I think they're going to lose. The Panthers are not a very good team. Experts are all over the Panthers on this one. I'm bucking the experts, and I'm going with the Falcons, but I'm playing it on the money line, minus 145. Okay, because that uh, line is uh, dropped a little bit. I mean, not a big move, but it's down to three and a half in a lot of spots right now from uh, I think it opened at four, right? I I didn't four, see four that. I didn't. It's that's three that's interesting. But I've been seeing it at three, three and a half. But we both know the reason why. Probably these quarterbacks have terrible starts because they go from incredible programs in college and then they go to the worst. It's, it's they're nothing drafted against number one because of the worst yeah, team picking them it, up. It, it's nothing against them. No, of course it, not. It, it's just they're they're being put. It was funny. Um, Caleb Williams' dad. He's a beast. Caleb Williams' dad was saying how. He's not super excited about his son getting drafted because he knows wherever he goes, it'll be the worst team. Probably it's going to be the worst team in football. I mean, that's just how the cookie crumbles, and it takes a few years for them to to get anywhere usually. So well, because of the speed difference too. Don't forget, there's a lot of speed, and the NFL is a much quicker game than the college football. So. Look at Johnny Menzel. He couldn't handle it. A lot of these quarterbacks, they can't handle the speed. They don't get the adjustment of the game like they do in the college rank to the NFL. It's almost like you made an analogy about USFL versus NFL thing. This is even a bigger jump when you go from college, even though you play for a great uh, program, when you go to the NFL, it's a huge leap. You got to really get used to the I th- speed. I think Johnny Football had other issues that derailed. Well, he had his, some issues. Derailed his you professional took that, career. You but took he, that out of my mouth. Yeah, yeah but he, he also. <laughs> but he was a great talent. He, he remind me of a Doug Flutie, great college athlete. Well, Doug Flutie was a good quarterback in the he, NFL. He, he, he was good, but uh, played a long time. Manzel just, yeah, he. I think he, you don't like him because he played for the Patriots. No, no, nothing to do with that. I remember a bad game once when Dick almost hit him on the sidelines. I remember we're going, we're going back a couple of years here where they. Had they had an issue? A couple. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys see the Manziel documentary? I actually didn't. Uh, Very. He, he had serious problems. Highly, highly recommended show. He, that whole. So I don't know if you guys watch. Um, 
it's called uh, I can't think of the name of it, but that whole show with uh, with Manzel. They had an episode on Manzel. They had an episode on the Gators. Very very interesting. Yeah. Listen, I got to give my best bet. I've given you guys all this, and I, I took off my what I'm thinking here. But I've got a huge play on Sunday in the NFL. My best bet is going with Green Bay. Green Bay Packers plus the one against Chicago. I love this game. I feel that Green Bay is going to go in there. I feel the, the Bears should have been about a two-and-a-half, three-point favorite. Uh, you know, first game for Jordan Love, I think he's going to come out right. I think they're going to work the system really well. And I like Green Bay in this game as a big-time play, plus the one playing against the Bears in week one. So that's my top play for Sunday. Anything else you guys want to talk about with the NFL well, before there, we? Uh... There, there's another game I'm looking at, and I'm I'm going to okay. chase the biggest line on the board. I mean, the Ravens are a 10-point favorite over the Texans week one. I mean, what can you say about the Texans? Two and ten straight up the last 12 versus Baltimore. Ravens six and one ATS last seven games week one. Uh, I think the Ravens come out and personally smoke the Texans. Uh, 10 seems like a big number. Uh, I, I could see this being a, a 20, 25-point blowout personally. All right. I'm going to go over to Teddy and see if he has anything left because I do have one other play that I like, on, but I want to pass it over to I, you first. I have one more. I'm looking at the Buccaneers plus six versus Minnesota. So this is a Minnesota team that is – it's they had a lot of wins last year, but they didn't really cover a lot of spreads. A lot of the wins were last minute. They had, I think, 10 or 11 or 13, some a high number of wins by only one score. Mm -hmm. Out of their last 28 Ws, 23 of them have been by one score or less. That's going back a couple years. This is an emotion versus numbers game for, uh, for me. We always talk about numbers. Scotty talks about it. Tommy talks about it. My emotions, I love Kirk Cousins. My emo I love Justin Jefferson, drafted him in my fantasy league first overall. Motions say Vikings crush him, but the numbers in this game say Buccaneers all day long. Um, both teams were under 50% against the spread last year. Vikings had a negative point differential. How often do you see a team with that many regular season wins with a negative point differential, it's very rare. I think six points is a lot. I think the Vikings win the game. Okay. I think they're giving them too much credit with those six. I would even buy it to seven and take the Buccaneers plus seven. All right. There you go. You heard it from the man himself. Well, I'm going to jump on a game. I think uh, it's right team right here in the backyard. I like the Dolphins this week. I think the Dolphins on the road got a big shot to go uh, going out to L.A. and steal in this game. I think the Dolphins are real. Um, I'm looking forward to a big season. I think they're going to play extremely well, and I think this would be a, a real good game for them to get off their belt. Justin Herbert is a beast. I, we all know that, but he's going into a new system. He's got a new uh, offensive coordinator. I think Miami is settled in and what they got, and they're going to come out there. They're getting three points in this game. I like the number at three. I won't even touch it. I think the Dolphins are a live bet in this game. And, guys, I'd be taking the Dolphins. I think they uh, – they're going to go out to L.A. and show, uh, show them who's boss in this one. So Miami Dolphins plus three. That's, uh, that's it for would, me. Would, would you sprinkle a little on the money line? I mean, you know, I'm a numbers guy, so I, I prefer to take the plus three. I mean, I, I wouldn't advise money lines, especially on the road. I'm using a couple of games this week. Uh, matter of fact, all three bets I'm putting out on the show are all on the, uh, on the road. Uh, team, so uh, I'm looking for some road warriors this week. But no, I would take the three because it's on the road. I think that number's right on this game. Uh, you know, they, they would definitely make the charge as the favorite. So uh, take the Dolphins plus the three guys and get on that. All right, before we wrap up, I mean, uh, there's other things going on out there. Uh, anything you want to add? I know you always have things on your mind. Anything about baseball or any other topics uh, that you want to discuss before we go? Yeah, I, I mean, we were talking about earlier, Tommy was talking about Coach Prime. There you go. And, Prime but, time. But but my thing is this. it's it, What's going on right now in college football, Coach Prime's a great, great coach. I love what I'm seeing from him. But it goes a little bit beyond that and just the transfer portal. So you saw, um, you saw Texas State. They had the second most transfer portal players after Colorado. They came in, and they had the big upset against Baylor. Baylor was like a 26-point yep. favorite. And Texas State beat them outright. 
Um, they went from 0-11 against Power 5 schools before that game at an average loss of 27 points to beating Baylor. And this coach, uh, G.J. Kinney, he is just he's using that transfer portal. And then you look at Clemson. Mm. And you look at the way Clemson got beat. And what did Dabo Sweeney say last year? He said, I'm not messing with the transfer portal. I'm not getting involved in that. I'm not partaking in those shenanigans. Well, guess what? This first week might have showed us that if you want to be a powerhouse in college football, you need to partake in those shenanigans. You need to use the transfer portal. Otherwise, you might be left in the dust. Yeah. Hey, Tommy, uh, not only uh, Coach Primetime, but what about his son throwing for 510 yeah. yards? I mean, That's amazing listen, the, the, in his first game. Without a doubt, an exceptional showing. Uh, just quickly about Coach Prime, it's gonna we're gonna have to see how he progresses throughout the season. You got USC coming up, you got Oregon. Let's see how he does. He he did make history, deserved everything. Be interesting to see if Colorado could be a contender this year. You're well, you're still a doubter. He's not necessarily a doubter, but he let, was a doubter last let, week. Let, let, let's see. Let's see when they get to play some of the big boys how he's going to fare. Oh yeah, he's going to play some big boys because uh, USC man, they're for real. Number you six, got you, you got Utah got, in there. You got, you got UCLA. You got Oregon. You, you got Oregon. You yeah. got you got some teams. He's going to. You you have teams, Scotty. And here's the crazy thing: the Pac-12 is going away after this year, and it might be their <laughs> best year ever. Yep. You got, going away with a bang. You got Michael Penix at Washington. You got Bo Nix at Oregon. You got um, Caleb Williams at USC. You got Utah beating UF without Cam Rising. I was wrong about that one. I said if Cam yeah. Rising didn't play, Flor well, Florida had it. Utah still crushed them. The, the Pac-10, it's kind of sad, and here's what, what I think. And you guys can relate with this. We Pac work twelve. Pac twelve. Pac twelve. Sorry, we work on Sun. We work on Saturdays, right? So I, I work, I, I run my business on Saturday, and by the time I get off work, some of the only games I can watch sometimes are these Pac twelve games that are on late at night. So I'm gonna miss the high scoring, kind of late night football action that the Pac twelve delivers. It's a little bit sad that this this conference is going away, especially where their talent pool is right now. Well, yeah, the the conference is going away, but the teams aren't going away. They're just going to spread themselves to Big Ten. You know, it's going to make it more interesting down the road. You might uh, think that this could be an excellent move for college football because you're going to put a lot of good teams together in these big conferences. So it, it, it I think it, it could fare really well. I mean, it's it's it kind of shitty to think that the Pac-12 is going away. It's been around for 110 years or so. But, yeah, it's definitely happening. I think the Pac-12 teams are showing up to play. But I think we did a we got a great show today, guys. Um, another killer show, week one of the NFL season. 